from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Welcome to the celebration of Daily TV Mass. My name is Monsignor Robert Nuska. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Teresa D'Souza from Scarborough, Ontario, in loving, member of, in lo loving memory of her parents Clement and Lillian Saldhana, for the living and deceased members of her family, for the forgotten souls, and in thanksgiving for the daily TV Mass. The second is Betty Lee Crane from Toronto, Ontario, in memory of Sister Augusta Highland, IBVM, and Sister Irma Long, IBVM, of Loretto, Niagara, and for all the Loretto sisters. The third is an anonymous donor in thanksgiving to God for the innumerable gifts and graces that they have received over the years. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up the priest St. John Bosco as a father and teacher of the young, grant, we pray, that aflame with the same fire of love, we may seek out souls and serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. My friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us, through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and once we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus told this parable to the disciples. Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given to you. For those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, the church celebrates St. John Bosco, a great Catholic educator who dedicated his life and a priestly ministry to working with the poorest of the poor and underprivileged in the 19th century. Blessed with a brilliant memory, Don Bosco was a great pastor, great preacher, great teacher, wonderful organizer, who gives us a wonderful example, a great example of a very holy priest who did so much and sacrificed so much, working tirelessly to help to better the lives of many other people. His entire apostolate reflects a genuine, can we call it, an asceticism of hard work. In his own writings, he says, I do not recommend penance and disciplines, but work, work, work. How fitting that as our Lord teaches us in today's gospel that the measure in which we give is the measure in which we receive. The church calendar celebrates today this saint who was a relentless worker, again, an organizer, and often slept only five hours a night. The faithful witness of St. John Bosco remains for us, I think, a, a great example of what it means to be a light shining on a lampstand, what Jesus is calling us to be in the Gospels, inspiring us and so many others to live the life of faith but to live it in its fullness. St. John Bosco died today at the age of 72 in 1888. By the time of his death, miracles had already been attributed to him. Some 40,000 people paid their respects where he was waked, and thousands more turned up for the procession of his funeral. He was canonized in 1934 by Pope Pius XI, who had known him personally as a young priest. The Salesian Fathers, the Salesian Sisters of Don Bosco, founded by him, continue the wonderful charitable work of this great saint in their missions throughout the world. Don Bosco remains for us a great and I think a shining example to us today of spiritual fatherhood. Never without a smile, he was known to be a kind, gentle man. Appropriately, he is referred to as the saint of joy, teaching his students that holiness consists in being joyful and in being cheerful. Hard work, sacrifice, yes, but not without the joy of the Lord. In our own, what can we call postmodern era, post-truth, how can we announce this joyful message of the gospel to a disbelieving world in our era of the new evangelization? We might be tempted to ask, what is there to be so joyful about? 
given the problems facing the church today, the problems facing the world, there are many signs to us of, uh, that speak of a profound emptiness at the heart of our culture. Yet beneath the surface of contemporary culture is, is a great desire still for spirituality. Even if fewer people in our time tend to associate spirituality with religious practice. One recent study speaks of 70% of millennials, that is those born between the early 80s and the late 90s, 70% of millennials desire some form of spirituality. Admittedly, it is highly personalized, tends to be more focused on human potential and techniques for growth, certainly than what St. Paul seems to have had in mind when he coins the term spirituality in his first letter to the Corinthians in speaking about what is influenced by the Holy Spirit of God. In the past several decades, spirituality has come to be a kind of generic term for living the human capacity for self-transcendence, whether one's experience is religious or not. And so this large spiritual but not religious population is a significant phenomenon in our time. And I think one of the greatest ways for us in this era of the new evangelization to spread the gospel, to bring the gospel to others in their society in the time in which we live is precisely through the power of our own personal, joyful witness to the faith like St. John Bosco. And there's nothing new in this suggestion. St. Augustine, others speak of winning people for Christ. As so many times in church history, the history of the world, and people are looking to us, we who profess belief in Jesus Christ, to see, first of all, whether we convey the joy and the light that a faith lived deeply has the power to convey. What are we to do? St. John Bosco taught in his own, to his own students, do the ordinary things in an extraordinary way, insisting that it's not necessary to look for extraordinary ways to be holy or to practice virtue, he says, accept what the day brings. Let us do what we have to do each day, but do it well. Do it joyfully. Do it for the love of God. Do it for the love of neighbor and offer it in prayer. We must never underestimate the power of the witness of a life, the life of faith lived fully, lived deeply, and with this sense of joy in the face of whatever can we call dehumanizing factors may be at work in the world today. Some years back, it was St. John Paul II who reminded us that the gospel remains a powerful antidote in our time to the pollution of spirit that we see around us, the pollution of life and of culture today. Today's memorial then invites us to take as our inspiration the lives of the saints who won countless numbers to the gospel through the centuries precisely by their joyful witness to the gospel their joyful witness to Jesus Christ. St. Paul invites us to witness to the gospel cheerfully. St. Teresa of Calcutta says that joy speaks for itself. The joyful person, she writes, preaches without preaching. A cheerful sister, she says, is like a net that catches souls for God. Many centuries ago, it was St. John Chrysostom who said that where charity radiates joy, there we have a feast. St. Teresa of Avila puts it a little bit differently when she says, from long-faced saints, deliver us, O Lord. Certainly, we have many cheerful saints to choose from for our inspiration. Again, St. John Bosco, St. Philip Neri, the so-called prophet of joy, St. Francis de Sales. These are also among the joyful, can we call them the smiling saints. So we need to ask then God for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and for the grace of the joy of his presence in our hearts, in our lives, as an antidote to whatever sufferings, whatever anxiety, times whatever cynicism, but also to be able to radiate that joy, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit to those around us. As we continue to celebrate this Mass then, let us pray for the grace of living our faith deeply, to do the ordinary things in an extraordinary way, to do so with the spirit of true Christian joy, so as to win others to the beauty of our faith. Finally, let us pray for the grace to experience the joy of encountering Christ in our own hearts at this Eucharist that we are celebrating. 
Let us now present our prayers and petitions to God in heaven, asking him to hear and to answer our prayers. We pray for Francis, our Pope, for Thomas, our Bishop, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith that comes to us from the apostles, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. For all who are victims of natural disasters, for the poor, for the persecuted, for the sick, we pray to the Lord. For the intentions of today's Mass, we pray to the Lord. And for all those in the daily TV Mass community who've asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those asking for peace in their family, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Yes, Lord. That's right. To the English water. Why may come to share in divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord, we ask you to receive us to be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation made by your consecrated people in commemoration of St. John Bosco be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that by participation in this mystery, we may reflect the pattern of your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on this festival of St. John Bosco, you bid your church to rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep us safe in answer to his prayers. So with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we, will, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, St. John Bosco, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. May this holy meal give us strength, almighty God, so that by the example of St. John Bosco, we may show in our hearts and by our deeds both fraternal charity and the light of truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at one 888 383-6277 for details.